So we are in the process of trying to redesign the chain locker. Our issue is that the windlass was too far up and because of that... Too far forward. Yeah, too far forward. And the issue with that is that it dropped all the chain way too far forward in the chain locker and it piled up too high. So we had to flake it as it was coming up. Um, and that ended up kind of being a two-person job because of where the buttons were for the windlass and all this other nonsense. So we're trying to get it so that it flakes initially in the right place and we don't have to flake it by hand every single time we pull the anchor up because as you guys know we anchor a lot. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat even stronger than she was before and we're bringing you along with us. Oh, hi, Max. What are you doing down there? Are you gonna come up? You wanna come up here? <laughs> he thinks he does. When we decided to rebuild the chain locker, we knew we were also going to be doing some redesign work. As it was when we bought it, the windlass dropped the chain directly down into the front of the locker behind a set of ribs. Without us flaking the chain, it would just pile up before eventually falling and potentially tangling in a big messy pile in the bottom of the locker. So this meant that we needed to have someone up flaking the chain the entire time it was coming out of the water. This wasn't the worst, but it was uncomfortable, and the placement of the windlass button made flaking and keeping the chain moving difficult. So we usually had both of us up front as the anchor was being pulled up, which was less than ideal. But there wasn't a straightforward way to redesign the locker. Although it looks like a fairly large area, once we moved the windlass so it would drop the chain in the correct place, it didn't leave us much room for a door. And we need a door. We toyed with the idea of putting the windlass right in the center of the locker and putting a door beside the windlass. But this would mean that our door would be too small to really be functional for climbing in or out of the locker if we needed to. And with how deep the locker is, we knew at some point we would need to get in there. The next thing we tried was putting the windlass as far forward as possible and creating a spurling pipe. We were going to put in a spurling pipe. That was the hope. But we have just discovered that we don't have enough depth in the chain locker to actually make that feasible. Not unless we cut our chain in half, which... <laughs> Makes no sense. Yeah, we're not doing. So we are just now currently trying to figure out how we can get the chain, or the, sorry, how we can get the windlass back farther without having an issue then of our door being weird or not really functional to actually get into the locker. So we just put this board across so that we can see when we pull the chain up where it will flake at different distances. And this is about, what, eight inches back from where it's been? How far back do you think? Is that where it was flaking before? Was about there? a foot back from where Damn. we needed it, which leaves us no room for a door in front and no room for a door in the back because this is what our windlass looks like. And the chain comes up right there. And then we have this big, big bit at the back that sticks out past where the gypsy is and can't be over top of a door. So, yeah. This is quite the conundrum. We also debated putting the windlass inside the locker, which is actually how it was originally designed, but this opened up a bunch more issues with rust and water and wear on the windlass, and we just didn't feel like dealing with that. So instead, we decided to send the windlass back as far on the deck as we could. Surprisingly, this ended up working. Um, well, let's see what's gonna happen here. I mean, we could probably come over a little bit more, but I think it's okay. 
We changed the angle of the spurling pipe to be a bit less than recommended, but with the windlass further back we were able to get the length we needed to have the chain drop in the center of the locker. The only issue we still had to deal with was the door. With the windlass at the back of the locker, this means that the chain will have to travel over top of our locker door. Now if you have any experience with a chain, you know that you can't open a door that is underneath it while you are pulling the chain up or while it is under stress. But with the windlass aft, the door has to be forward. We debated just having a smaller door off to the side, but then again we were running into the same issue of not being able to climb down into the locker. We have decided that we are going to put two overlapping doors, one which will run under the chain and the other will be able to be opened regardless of whether or not the chain is in use. And like most of the time we're not going to have to have both sides open anyway, being able to open that one side is going to be enough to pull the chain. Yeah. Just have both sides for if we need to work in there, right? Or check it or whatever. There should be lots of room on either side for getting in and up. Yeah, and then the pile is right underneath, so you can literally just yeah, exactly. open it and give it a jab with a stick. Exactly. You're not trying to flake it the whole time, so it shouldn't be an issue. The only problem we're going to have is with the road, but the amount that we use it, it's not... No, I don't think it's going to matter that much. I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, later on down the line, we could always just cut out a hatch over there there's going to be a deck uh, like a support going back here and back yeah, here around the windlass. take the weight for the windlass yeah and then it'll be that plate will connect across it right i've gone through several different scenarios on how to both fit a <laughs> anchor windlass and a chain locker door into the same small area and none of it is ideal but I think we're still going to use a spurling pipe idea but we're going to, going to bring the spurling pipe or bring the windlass back as far as we can bring it back and make a shorter spurling pipe which then heads forward and drops into a more ideal space and I don't think it's going to be a whole problem solver but we'll see. Um, we did a couple of test runs with it just clamped into place with a with a short piece of pipe we found laying around. It actually worked out really well um, but we ha we still have so much chain that it ends up piling up and gets too close to the tube. But I think it's going to do that regardless. And we're just going to have to knock the pile over. But instead of flaking it every step of the way, just knocking it down maybe once or twice as we're pulling up the anchors. Good enough. Like that'll be a the compromise that we're going to have to deal with. Just so much easier to do that than to flake it consistently. Yeah, the flaking was was really just awful. Well, flaking it because you had to use a pole, like a, a shortened boat hook, to reach in underneath and, and pull it back. Um, as you're doing that, because the door is only so big, you end up smashing your knuckles on stuff. And I've hit my funny bone more times than I'd like to recount. Yeah, it was not comfortable. I think this is a good compromise. We've let chain out, brought chain back in, and it seems to work really well where it's at, and that's where the pile spreads out the most and stays down into the bottom. So um, I know it's not gonna be exactly how we've set it up right now, but hopefully some iteration of what we do here is going to work. And that's going to put our chain locker door in front so the chain runs over top of it, which is less than ideal, but I think we're going to reuse our door and just split it 
uh, just offset of center so that we can open up half of it without hitting the chain and then open up the other half. Right. And I think that is uh, as good as we're going to get it. The opening will be the same size. There is a deck beam running across it, so that it will be not as good. But it gets us into the part of the chain locker that we never, we weren't able to get into before to access. Um, and our hopes are that we can use this back area here for our, our rope part of our road and um, just be able to coil it up and throw it back there so it's not in the bottom of the locker. Once we had the design figured out, it meant we needed to redesign both the door frame and the structure the windlass sits on. We started with the windlass mount, but we will get to that story next week. Thanks for joining us, and if you have enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe.